Hi everyone, this is Professor Chuck Wood coming at you from Duquesne University once again. Today we're going to be talking about uh, interview questions that you would have on security architecture um, that uh, when, when you're applying for that job. These are high level questions and typically you're in a management role. Okay, so uh, first, how do you test for network and server security faults? Okay, so you have your network, all the computers that are together are put together through a network and each computer is a server, how do you test for faults in that uh, that you have where we have a security system in place, what's wrong with it? Okay, the, how you test for that is a, is a technique called penetration testing or ethical hacking. Um, this is where someone takes the role of a hacker and tries to hack into your system. So what you do is you set up security as, as, a, as best you can and then you bring in a penetration tester who goes and tries to break into your system from usually outside the company. So, so uh, uh, it, it's very effective. Most companies do it. They even have uh, uh, competitions where two banks say, we'll try to hack into each other and the winner gets a gift card or something like that. Uh, so that, so that uh, you know, to try to get uh, 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 sites more secure. Okay, the next question. Why is virus protection so ineffective in your business? Okay, first off, it is ineffective. Many people don't know that. The second, re the reason is, is this: you have what's called a zero-day virus or a one-zero-week virus, where a virus comes out and uh, starts spreading around your system, uh, your, not your system, everybody's system, and and, uh, and uh, the virus protection software that you use doesn't recognize that virus unless it goes streaming on by. Okay, now the viruses that have been out for a while, the virus protection software works against them but usually the computers you're connected to already have the virus protection built in, so they stop those already. You're not getting exposed to those too often at all. You're getting exposed to the new things which just breeze through your protections. Okay, once they get onto your server, they can disable your virus protection. So it turns out to be very ineffective to use virus protection. I know that seems uh, uh, a little odd to many people, but it's true. Okay, so you have to do other things like monitor the site, intrusion detection, things like that. Okay, uh, what is a firewall? A firewall, as the name implies, is a barrier you put up, software or hardware, it could actually be a, uh, something you buy, but it could be something you install. When, when information comes in from uh, an untrusted network like the internet, it scans that information, where it came from, where it's going to, what's contained inside it, to make sure that it's okay to go through. Okay, so, uh, so a firewall is probably the best protection you can possibly have to make sure that your system is secure. Uh, and even at home, at home, you want your system's firewall protected. It's, more, it's even more important than the virus protection. Okay, then, next question, which is kind of related. What is a demilitarized zone, or a DMZ? Okay, when an organization sets up a, a hypersecurity uh, area, they have the internet traffic coming in that hits a firewall. They have the trusted network over here that also hits a firewall, usually a different firewall. And in between is a demilitarized zone, a DMZ, that contains the web servers and access to information that you normally, it's not that you don't care that hackers get into it, but it's not as vital to the uh, company's interest. So things like secret numbers, uh, uh, intellectual property, things like that, are in the trusted network and not exposed to the directly to the web. Uh, so the DMZ has the web servers where you provide information to your clients and things like that over the web already. Okay, and then the final question is, what is public key encryption? Public key encryption involves the use of two keys. One key is private, and uh, with that, the, the company holds that key and it's used to decrypt any information that it receives. The public key they give out to everyone, and everyone uses that public key to encrypt their own files, but they can't use that public key to decrypt, only to encrypt. They send that information that's encrypted with the public key to the company, and the company uses their private key or a public-private key combination to decrypt that information. Okay, and so that's all for today. Uh, please subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to check out my Amazon books. Soon we'll be having a chapter with uh, 
5, say, April in 2015 on ethical hacking and penetration testing. So go look for that too. And uh, thank you very much. Bye.